All right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody. Well, it's been a hard week for StarCraft 2, and we've heard about a few things to do with some RTS games coming out in the last few years and often just lacking that final little bit of polish that they needed, right? Um, there have been some great ones in there, but nothing on the competitive scope of a StarCraft 2 or anything like that, right? We've seen certain things not go exactly the way we wanted and recently we've just had news that war chests are no longer being produced uh and neither are co-op commanders so there is no more paid content being developed for starcraft and a lot of people have been sad they've been asking me my thoughts and i i kind of wanted to hold off on talking about it because i actually did get a bit of a sneak peek into something very exciting and new which is coming up which is what i wanted to talk about in this video and that is that a bunch of the developers of Warcraft, of Starcraft, a bunch of people who are working on the Blizzard Starcraft team in the, in the last few years have moved over and have just formed a brand new studio, a brand new company, Frost Giant. And this is really awesome because right when Starcraft 2, 10 years in, is starting to lose some of that support from Blizzard, uh, we are getting news that a bunch of the people who made Starcraft, made Warcraft, the great games that they are, have joined forces and uh, made a new company and say, hey, we actually still want to focus all of our efforts on creating a AAA rated uh, RTS. And that's bloody exciting. It's a breath of fresh air because there's been a lot of people out there creating RTSs. They have often not had the same level of experience that we see in this team. So uh, Tim Campbell is one of the head guys who you might not be familiar with, but he was, I believe, the lead of Reign of Chaos as well as Frozen Throne campaign um which i must have replayed 27 to 35 times throughout my life i don't know like some it's definitely double digits it's definitely over 15 times i've played those campaigns because they're so well done even my kid brothers where it's like well past their time they're more than 10 years younger than me even though they've replayed it many times and love it and i'm sure a lot of you you people listening to did as well so um tim campbell there uh who also worked on um, some of the Command and Conquer series. I believe he worked on Red Alert 2 and Generals um, and has, has worked on a whole bunch of other games. Uh, we've also got, of course, Tim Morton, who was the head of StarCraft 2 for the last uh, many years. I can't remember exactly when he came on, but I do, uh, when, whenever you spoke, spoke to anyone at Blizzard, you'd hear a lot about his influence as somebody who is such a passionate esport fan. And some of you, you might remember him from you know doing uh talks whenever they were revealing new content at these events or getting interviewed on a, on a panel or an analysis desk by Kolaris or Nathanius or the like but uh he's a super passionate esports fan who also realizes that honestly to get people into a game and create a big healthy thriving esports scene you've got to make it accessible and you've got to make it something that you can come home after a long day of work and you can open it up and have some damn good fun. And that's exactly what co-op was. Co-op was a, a big baby of his, something which he pushed really hard, was wanting to say, look, Archon mode's all well and good, but it just doesn't tickle the same, the same kind of uh, strategic box that co-op does, where you're picking your different abilities on your heroes, you're leveling them up, you're unlocking different, different tiers, you're using different build orders and different unit compositions. There was so much control in co-op. And yes, it took a little bit of the mechanical load off, right? Some of the things were made easier. So it wasn't quite as stressful, but it was, you work with your, your, your uh, teammate, you could play it with your mate, take on these crazy numbers of, of aliens and use insane abilities to do it. So I feel like co-op just hit the button for so many players. Um, I'm not actually someone who plays a lot of co-op. I'm a hardcore RTS player, but even when it, whenever I've played it, whether it's been for uh, Twitch Rivals or something, I've had so much fun. And it was Tim who really pushed that as this accessible feature within StarCraft. And I've had so many of my friends get back into the game more and more that had not been playing as much once co-op came out. So one of their big goals they've announced with Frost Giant is they want to try and ease that on-ramp into enjoying RTS games. For a lot of us who grew up with gaming, all the early games were RTS games, right? A lot of the best ones were. And we were all mostly hardcore nerds who liked playing games and were happy to figure things out. These days you're inundated with so many gaming experiences that are so easy to just get in there, shoot some people in the head, run around, whatever. Half the games play themselves for you, right? You know, you go back to those old games, which a lot of us grew up with, 
and <laughs> you're just dying over and over again and every single level was usually brutal in most games that you played and that's just the way it was it was it was a, a super big challenge you know we liked that but in the modern day you know there needs to be a balance and that's something that they're really aiming for they are massive fans of warcraft and starcraft like i said they developed the games um in large part themselves as well so no one on this team wants to get rid of the esports to the competitive side but chatting to them they, they were saying we want to make that on ramp easier we want to do whatever we can to get people in and enjoying and understanding the game and we want to make that as smooth as possible and they're exploring a whole ton of different ideas they didn't give much away when i quizzed them about it but actually i'm gonna have um tim morton on my podcast the pig show in about two weeks or so we're just ironing out an exact date so we're gonna ask him a lot about that as well as working on starcraft and a whole bunch of these other things so hopefully i can tease out some secrets um that he maybe shouldn't be sharing before <laughs> before they announce any details we'll see we'll see if we can we can trick him into giving us some uh, some juicy details but yeah i'm i'm super excited honestly um tim's always been just like the biggest the biggest sweetheart um where he's such a successful game developer um tim morton and he's always there uh you know very very passionately looking to do anything he can to improve the games that he cares about so to have him on board is great um the rest of the team is fantastic as well i've, I've met a few of them uh people like monk who used to be involved with team liquid used to commentate hearthstone then came on as the head of co-op and also balance uh designer in the last few years in starcraft 2 he's a very smart guy super passionate plays i think like masters league starcraft and honestly just one of those people i've known from so many events over the years uh who just wants to make starcraft better and better he's now moved over to frost giant and i think he's going to be really valuable input there as someone who's so young so plugged into the esports scene and the competitive side of things and has so much experience across multiple rts's and multiple competitive games so he's he's an absolutely awesome addition they've also got ryan shooter who for those who don't know invented game heart if you guys go back and actually let me let me see if i can find a video while i, I talk about this um <laughs> let's go 2010 starcraft on youtube this is gonna be so appallingly bad guys um so i don't have the sound on on purpose but let's see if we can get a shot of a gsl video from 2010 uh let me go back a little bit wait wait, wait. Oh, oh this is a highlight clip one second one second um here we go a look at that oh my god yep this is what the in-game overlay used to look like and this is by the way a few months in so they'd updated with the production tab that wasn't there when it first started but look at this this whole bottom of the screen is just blocked it's ruined you can't see why is all this here you can't see the supply accounts or anything sorry i do have the cut that the top of the screen cut off you can see the resources in the top right only of the player who's, who's clicked on it was a really terrible viewing experience and he was just a big fan of starcraft so he actually volunteered created game heart on his own time and he just revolutionized he kept updating it he revolutionized the viewing experience he made it so team logos and tournament logos could be popping up on the map uh he made it so all sorts of awesome things with it and he actually got hired by blizzard and worked on starcraft as the head of ui for the last like seven years or something like that um so he's an absolute legend when it comes to user interface and actually making games look good and feel good to play he is somebody who um who who puts a lot of love and passion into that user interface and he made starcraft both in the menus in game the wcs interfaces he just kept making things smoother and smoother i'm not sure exactly but i'm imagining things like the spray paint tags maybe were something to do with him as well as like the little floating logos next to the the command centers and that sort of stuff so essentially what i'm getting at guys is it's just it's a passionate team and to see so many people that were part of the people who were always down at the events watching esports who were always at the summits clearly passionate about what they were doing and so involved in starcraft to see a lot of that talent say hey okay starcraft's not getting developed anymore rts isn't getting developed at blizzard let's form our own thing let's start it and let's just bring our love of rts forwards um and i i was excited i was like sweet you guys gonna make an indie studio and make a cool game like this will be really awesome you know maybe they'll make like the next they are billions or north guard or something I'm like those games were great right and they're like oh no 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 no. we want to make a triple a title and i was like oh okay but like because <laughs> there's money in east in rts people say rts is dead and i'm like no it's not like you you got if you make a good rts there's, there's money there it's just you don't want to spend you know a hundred million dollars making it the, the way you, you know people are like oh it's the new destiny let's spend 600 million dollars making it it's fine we'll make five five billion back 
and you don't really do that with rts games but they're like no no no. we want to make like a big game we they, they actually are saying look if we can they they believe they can make it easier to play easy to get people in there they want to make it so it's gonna you know unlike starcraft which uh, they, they don't want it to be like starcraft which came out you paid your 80 dollars your 60 dollars or whatever wherever you were in the world you got your box and that was it and you couldn't buy things in the game so there was no more income steadily coming in after the initial booms expansion comes out they make a bunch of money but then how are you going to support the esports scene right how are you going to support ongoing development to keep improving the game and balancing it and adding new units and things to make it fun there was no plan for that for starcraft 2 and that was one of the big issues which you know starcraft 2 came out and it was huge and why did league of legends take it over it's because you had this malleable game well it didn't have replays so not that malleable but <laughs> it was designed to be monetized in the microtransaction era which i know a lot of people don't like and they haven't told me if they're doing that at all with frost giant by the way so i'm not saying they are but what i'm saying is i'm sure they're going to set up a system which is built to allow them to continue developing it and making it better and improving it um through time because you know they want this to be a big esport they also want to make it a lot easier to get into and starcraft 2 when it launched it was like hey there's no chat channels there's no social aspect we have a, a 1v1 ranked ladder bat button and a 2v2 and a 3v3 and that's like basically the game and it was you know the arcade was butchered and gutted and it was hard for communities to actually meet up through the game and you know through the first three years of starcraft 2 i think there was a lot of a lot of issues with things not being supported quite the way they could have and uh, I, I think all of those lessons have been learnt. And I think even though StarCraft 2 is such a polished, well-made game, it lacked so many of those other little things to keep it going. And, you know, it's just one of those things where we, we still love StarCraft 2. And these guys actually, you know, they all love StarCraft 2 and still watch it and play it. Don't get me wrong. But they want to bring the next Warcraft, the next StarCraft, the next big AAA RTS. They want to get more people into it. They want to make it so they can turn it into a big eSport. But they also want to just create something that you can play on a very competitive level, but you can also play on a bit more of a casual level. They want to strike that that balance and bring RTS back into the mainstream. And for me, this gives me so much hope and, and faith in them because people have been telling me in my Twitch chat and my YouTube comment section and in real life that my game is dead and my career is dead. And they've been doing it for seven years now, um, maybe six years pretty heavy 2014 i think is when it started it's almost the end of 2020 now they're like oh you better you better move to another game rts is dead starcraft's dead um it's 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 absolutely not but but gaming and esports is cyclical right it goes through these these periods these cycles where something gets huge popularity and then it drops off and other things get really popular you know anyone who's, who's sitting here telling you absolutely battle royales are going to be the most popular game three four years from now i think are completely out, out of their minds because i think it goes good for a while and it is fun in its own way and it is great streaming entertainment but to think that's just going to stay dominant you know to say oh, oh mobas mobas were big and they were always going to continue to be the biggest game genre out there not necessarily so for me what i've had my eyes on for a while is when's that next rts going to come out um that's going to capture our minds our hearts that's going to play so smooth and just feel good to play um when's that going to happen when are we going to have one that also has good art and good voice acting and good lore and a great campaign behind it and if there is one studio i i kind of expect to get not just one of those pieces of the puzzle but everything packaged in one it is these guys i obviously i'm hoping i'm praying a lot of things can go wrong or right in game development and we don't know exactly what they're going to bring out but I'm very hopeful. I know there's a passionate team there. I know they want to go big on this. They don't want to cut corners. So they want to take their time making it. At the same time, they've said they're very confident they can do a lot quicker of a development than StarCraft 2. They don't want to take eight years or whatever ridiculous amount of time it was. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're keen. They're excited. And yeah, they're out there in the community looking for feedback. I already know they've been talking to a lot of pro gamers pro players commentators and they're out there kind of going hey what is what do you guys love what is what is the stuff that you guys love what are your ideas to make it better make it more accessible and that's what i want to ask you guys as well uh what do you want to see in the next big rts do you want company of heroes to come back i know i kind of do no I, I know there's people screaming that's not an rts pig it doesn't count i love that game but um, for me, I, I honestly wouldn't mind something that's a lot like Warcraft 3 to be the next big RTS. A Warcraft 4 type game, like something something in that vein. Because I've been doing StarCraft 2 for the last 10 years, it would just be such a cool change to me. I love I love Warcraft. I think that would be awesome. 
Uh, at the same time, StarCraft is the game I have the deepest, most serious relationship with. So if it ends up more in the StarCraft vein, but it freshens things up, brings new lore, new units, new, new gameplay aspects and mechanics, either way, I'm going to be bloody excited. Let me know in the comment section exactly what sort of game you guys want to see as the next big RTS. Uh, go give Frost Giant a follow on social media. I believe it's just Frost Giant everywhere. I think it is. Let me check. Uh, yeah, it's like Frost Giant Studio on Facebook, uh, Frost underscore Giant on Twitter, and their website is frostgiant.com. Check it out, guys. Have some fun, and uh, let me know your thoughts. And don't hold back. I know there's a few of you. No, nah, Perg, it's still a dead game. This company's going to fail. Let me know. Let me know. Um, the devs are most likely going to be checking the comment section of this video. I, I, I imagine I will link it. I'll link this video to them, guys, and they might actually be browsing and watching as well. So this is your chance to let your genius 300 IQ RTS development idea out. And who knows, you might actually influence them. Thanks for watching, everybody. Really appreciate the support. So sh throw some love to, uh, to Frost Giant and uh, join me in praying for the next big competitive esport. Let's go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night. I love you guys. See you in the next one.